Hi, Penny Lane here. And today I'm going to show you a quick workaround for engineering and architecture firms or other professional services who are not interested in the job costing system in QuickBooks to see the actual costs versus the ex estimated costs or even the actual costs versus the actual revenue. I've had several engineering firms want more like project status reports. So what you're looking for is I want to know to date based on my billable rate where I'm at on a project. How much time in a dollar value have we spent on this project versus how much we're going to get paid for it. The, the, the QuickBooks job costing system is not set up to do this. It's just not that sophisticated of a reporting system and um, it's easy to get the time. So you could go time by job detail and you can see by item how many hours each employee has spent on a job. But what you can't see is the dollar value that that represents, either in cost or in billable. Uh, most people want to look at this and see the billable rate. If you're genuinely not concerned with cost versus actuals on in your firm, then this workaround might work for you to leverage the job costing reports uh, into more project status reports. And here's how it works. Uh, here's a sample item list that an engineering firm might have. And the first thing you want to do is uh, pay attention to where your items are mapped. We're going to keep this one really simple and all of our items are mapped to wages draft person slash engineer. That means uh, this is in-house, on payroll employees that perform the work. And that's where uh, we want it to show up. And what you want to do is you want to make your cost the same amount as your sales price. Normally this wouldn't make any sense, but remember, we prepare reports, we're not looking for costs, we're looking for billable rate. So this is what you want to have as your billable rate. If you have custom prices and billing rate levels, then you get into sort of a separate issue. But for this demo, I'm just going to keep it real simple. And if things are a little more complicated for you, I might be able to help you figure out how to make this work. The second thing that we're going to do is we're going to enter a time on a timesheet. Now, the time that we're going to enter on the timesheet is not for actually processing payroll. You can process payroll and you can use the timesheets in QuickBooks for doing that. But you, in this scenario, you do not want to use them for job costing because that's just going to um, mess up your reports as you'll see at the end. Because remember, we're not looking for actual costs in this scenario. So you want to set up a vendor that is your employee name. We want it to be a vendor. Then you want to choose your customer job. We're going to choose test and your service item. Let's say we're doing drafting for this many hours on the test job and we're going to do um, maybe a field visit and maybe something else. I didn't enter my sales and um, cost price in for all of these yet, so it's not going to be a perfect scenario. In a perfect scenario, all of your costs and sales prices would be entered. Then we're going to save it. Then we're going to write a check. And we're going to use, um, you can use your petty cash account or you can use some kind of clearing account. In this particular one, it's called payroll clearing owner's time, but you could also have something called an adjustment register, any kind of a quote unquote pretend bank account where you can run um, transactions through. We're gonna enter Ben's name in here and it's gonna pop up and say, this name has time worked in the company data file. Do you want it, this to represent the time worked? We're gonna say yes. We're going to put in the dates, and I don't remember exactly what they were, but sometime in December. And all of the time comes out. Now, if I had my cost in my items like I showed you, um, they would all be showing up here. 
And when we say cost, we are not talking about cost, remember? We're talking about billable rate. This is the billable rate for each one of these items for this person. We also know that each one of these items is mapped to our cost of goods sold labor account called wages drafts person engineer. They could really be mapped um, to any GL account because we're gonna make this transaction cancel itself out. So over here, we're assigning these quote unquote costs to a job, which really is we're assigning the billable rate and hours to this job as a cost, and then we're taking it away from the same GL account that the items are mapped to, creating a net zero check. You would perform this activity, say, weekly for all of your employees. Um, you can also use that time to create time and materials billing for your customers if you like. Uh, there's a lot of uses for entering the time, but in this scenario, it's really just to post a quote unquote cost. When we enter the estimate for the customer, you can enter things like, um, this is gonna be the billing rate. So when you're entering estimates and you're really interested in cost versus actual, what you're gonna enter here is going to be your cost and then you're gonna put a markup on it. But in this case, we're not entering a separate cost. We're entering um, our billing rate and just what we're charging the customer. That's all we're gonna enter on our est estimate because remember, again, we are not interested in the actual costs. We're interested in the project status based on the billing rate. Now we're gonna run this report under jobs time and mileage, job estimates versus actuals detail on the test job. Uh, now what are we getting here? We're going to be getting um, our estimated cost, which in reality is our estimated revenue. And then we have our actual cost, which in reality is our actual time at the billing rate that has been spent on this customer. And then we have the difference. We don't actually need this field over here. We might find it helpful if we wanted to see how far we were actually billed out on a job though. So in this case, we can see that where we are in this project is we have $1,275 left of billable hours that we can spend on this job and still come out to meet our original estimate or our original, you know, our, our estimate or our proposal, our budget for that job. The actual revenue portion, you can either remove by customizing the report and taking it off, uh, but then you will need to memorize the report or you'll have to do it every time. Or you can leave it here because in this scenario you would say, well, this is great. I can see that our total budget for this job is $33.75 and that we've spent $2,100 worth of billable hours on it. So we have $12.75 left, but we haven't even sent the customer an invoice. We better get on that because we're kind of upside down right now. Um, if you bill your customer with progress invoices. So it's actually a very helpful thing, uh, thing to have on your report, even though your estimated cost and revenue are the same. You might also um, run the job estimates versus actual summary, which is pretty cool. You could see the same information for all of your jobs in an overview format. I hope that you found this helpful. Uh, if you have any questions or you would really like, might like to make this work for your firm and you need more help, please feel free to call me uh, or email me. Visit my website at quickbooksnow.com and uh, go to my products page and you can set up a one-on-one -on -one remote consulting appointment with me where I can share your screen with you and address your specific issues. There are a lot of nuances in the system, so uh, if you really wanna make it work for you and you're not sure how, please contact me. Thanks for watching and I wish you the best.